We are now at the pivotal moment in the planet Earth and we are all invited to make a choice. And if we cannot make a choice, then we need to be awakened enough to collapse the polarity within ourselves. We are you know, trained to think positive and negative, good and bad, black and white, interesting, boring, sexy, unsexy. So we are in polarity most of the time and our heart is in unity. And I think that we are learning how to unify and we're learning how to move from that duality, polarity consciousness into the unity consciousness. You know, every situation in our life is there for the learning, growth and empowerment. If you see life like that, then we will depart from victimhood forever and we will collapse into the unity because everything is for our benefit, right? If you believe, all of us believe that, oh my God, our life will be like, wow, is this making us happy? Are we content? Is that the way forward? Learning how to love yourself unconditionally. If you don't know how to do it, the, the first step is Yeah, I mean, I think that the AI, it's a, it's a very important issue right now. I am always divided between being extremely afraid of it and, and seeing the negative you know, side of, of it and then being extremely positive and seeing the positive side of it. So mm -hmm. somewhere in my heart, what I'm doing right now is trying to merge the polarities. And I also think this is exactly what is going on in the world right now because we are faced with these polarities, the war and the peace, you know, the aggression and humility, you know, the beauty and ugliness of human nature. Mm. And we have to merge it into to collapse the, those polarities. And for me, the AI is one of these biggest polarities in my life right mm. now because on a certain level, I love the efficiency of it. I love what it can do for humanity, but at the same time, I know the how much it can damage humanity at the same time. So I'm like, ah, what do I do? So I'm kind of trying to collapse it and merge it mm -hmm. into singularity somehow, you know? So that's mm -hmm. where I am with the AI right yeah. now. Yeah, I've just noticed I've kept my shirt on. That's okay. Because I always have the same. You look better in black. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be asexual. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You <laughs> look better in black. Neutral, neutral. I mean, why do you in black? That's a good polarity. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is it. The yin and yeah, the yang. This is it. This is it. The polarities. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting when we talk about the polarities. Mm -hmm. Because just like everyone can relate to social media, how divisive mm -hmm. it is, how mm -hmm. really disconnecting it can be to the moment we're in. Mm -hmm. But then the very thing that that's causing um, us to be disconnected mm -hmm. is obviously connecting us as well exactly so do you feel like these polarities are, are getting greater the same with ai it's going to happen mm -hmm. i think people are going to go and probably my judgment will be people in cities are going to go right into it mm -hmm. and then the people that don't are going to separate themselves mm -hmm. from it mm -hmm. and we're seeing it now people coming back to the land more and mm -hmm. rejecting the narrative we've been sold mm -hmm. of what's going to give you meaning and purpose mm -hmm. and happiness mm -hmm. um but in terms of the question where do you see that going do you see it like even further like mm -hmm. you know that even the the rich and the poor the disparity mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. is the disparity of our connection to the earth going to get greater yeah I really feel that, you know, we are now at the pivotal moment in the planet Earth. And as you mentioned, you know, all these distinctions and differences are becoming much more visible to everybody. Mm -hmm. And the one that, you know, the AI, for example, people who are for AI and they're seeing the beautiful benefits of AI and people who are against AI, they see negativity that AI brings. Same with the social media, same with the, you know, everything that is going on, being in the nature, being in the city. Mm -hmm. I think that those polarities are going to be wider and wider. I feel that at this mm. moment in time, we're all invited to make a choice. Mm. And if we cannot make a choice, then we need to be awakened enough to collapse the polarity within ourselves. What I mean by that is that the name of the game on this planet, actually, it's us coming into this earth, you know, being forgetful. We have this kind of amnesia. We forget all previous life, previous existence. And we're in the moment right now, right here, and we end up being in a duality. You know, we are you know, mm -hmm. trained to think positive and negative, good and bad, black and white, interesting, boring, sexy, unsexy. So we are in polarity most of the time. And our heart is in unity. And I think that we are learning how to unify. And we're learning how to move from that duality, polarity consciousness into the unity consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I think all of that that we're talking about, either we go in one direction or the other, or we unify.
there's always a third option, right? Mm, we can do the both. Third way. The, the third way. <laughs> the third way. And I think the third way is very interesting because, as you know really well, mm. there's always a shadow when there's a light. You know, I can be as spiritual as I want to be, as awakened that I want to be, but I do have shadows. Mm. There, I never met anybody in my life who didn't have shadow. You know, whatever that shadow is, trauma, a negative thought, negative feeling, somebody hurt you along the way, and if you ignore it, then you cannot <laughs> be enlightened. Mm -hmm. So that third way of unifying those shadow aspects and light aspects and really seeing that and collapsing that in our heart, I think is the way forward for all of us. Mm. And what's the best way you know to do that? The best way I know to do that is breath, you know, I, I don't, you know, I breath work became super <laughs> important nowadays. Yeah. For me, it's breathing, mm. you know, that's one practice, really practicing the breath work, connecting to your body, connecting to yourself, that's one. Meditation, you know, being able to still your mind and create a clear focus when you are in the state of not, not thinking any longer, and then being and feeling, because we are, as you know, human beings, and we are supposed to be and feel. And when we allow ourselves to be, then naturally we collapse polarities. Then we can see mm. the beauty in the horror. We can see the necessity in tragedy. We can see the cycle of life. We can see that something bad actually is not bad, but it's an outcome of certain actions and it's inevitable. Mm. We can understand much more because we become wiser because we're being. And observing so that's the second thing and the third one i mentioned being able to observe life mm. not identifying with our thoughts and i think that's something that we all suffer with uh, in especially in the western world because they taught us from the get-go you think therefore you exist right you, you are your thoughts and and this this association from thinking is super important because when we stop identifying ourselves with our thoughts then we can be mm. and we can be then we can collapse this and, and get into the unity mm, i thought the stoics were very smart but when they think therefore they are that's not necessary it's mm. quite the opposite isn't mm. it mm. yeah it's fascinating you touch upon this let's dive into it a bit further mm -hmm. um something i heard the other day was around every, every person who's trying to lead themselves mm -hmm. be better change things like step forward and step up mm -hmm lead lead themselves self-leadership it's, it's it's big you see it you know, going to tedx it's 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 people that are stepping forward and like making a stand for something mm -hmm. leading in their lives so when anyone ever does that the law of this earth is an equal and opposite force mm -hmm. will counter that yes and it's doubt it's the it's this inner critic it's the self-saboteur mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. whenever you try and make a change or or surge of force or energy goes in one direction there's something trying to pull you back in another <laughs> and i was it really landed i was like wow mm, mm. okay that's what that is it's just an energy that's trying to like equally mm -hmm. do the opposite exactly <laughs> wow wow i know I, isn't that wow <laughs> yeah and to me that came through my attention when i was studying flower of life with Dranvel Melchizedek he's one of the pioneers in the spiritual movement and he wrote the books the sacreds of flower of life mm -hmm. and he was the first one that I ever heard talking about it he mm -hmm. said as you are equally as you're positive the equal force of negativity mm -hmm. will come behind you and he was saying that you need to be always aware of what not only what is in front of you but what is behind you actually mm -hmm. that doubt you know, low self-esteem, you know, losing confidence, losing something, you know, understanding that you're not adequate enough will come as a result of you wanting something in your life. You're wanting to be amazing. You wanted to create extraordinary business. You wanted to have amazing relationship. Mm. There's always something that is following that. I was like, how is that possible? Mm. But I think that's the game of life, isn't it? That's the, yeah. the, the nature of this reality that we find ourselves into. And we, and we are not aware of this. Yeah. We're a little bit ignorant about that, right? We, we think, yeah. yeah, I'd say so. It's mm. the myth of our time that yeah. you can just move in a direction, the linear path. That's it. Yeah. And it doesn't exist, no. that linear part, that you're success, 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 success. That, you know, it's a curve. You know, you mm. fail, you get up, you know, something horrible happens. You learn from it, you move on. But I think it's important for us, first of all, to be aware that this is happening in our life mm -hmm. and then to understand how do we relate to that? Mm -hmm. What is our level of relating? How do we really perceive that so-called negativity or self-doubt? Or um, Yeah, when you were talking earlier, I just kept thinking about love. 
like that is the pure integration mm -hmm. of whatever it is you want to turn and face mm -hmm. and look at and then bring in embrace mm -hmm. whatever it is the polarity mm -hmm. to, to essentially give that more love mm -hmm. and love can be an energy it can be like an embrace of the darkness of you mm -hmm. of the thing that already keeps you humble exactly. every day but and how many of us are practicing self-love mm -hmm. i think that there is one aspect that we really all need to wake up into and do more of it's that deeper practice of self-love because mm -hmm. nobody actually teaches us as children you know the most important thing in your life is to love yourself you know we hear that as a billboard slogan you know love yourself love yourself but the, the sentence is just there but the knowledge the embodiment of this is not available for people because we receive love from our parents from our society but you, your mother and father that don't come and tell you you need to love yourself and this is the most important thing in your life when you know how to love yourself then everything is possible mm -hmm. you can heal you can transform you can collapse the polarities you can be in unity you can exercise unconditional love as a frequency you don't need to be in relationship. You are in relationship because you choose to be in relationship. You don't need anybody else to love you because you don't love yourself too much. So it's a huge uh, learning journey for all of us mm. to start practicing that seriously and then also embodying it m much more than ever before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when did you start to do that <laughs> in your journey or upbringing that may or may not have got mm. all these needs met? as a child and yeah. how did that how did that journey kind of like for everybody pain you know like pain is the journey everybody has the hero's journey you know i had my own hero's journey uh through my family mainly you know because my family was very challenging you know the difference between my mother and father and the way they were you know both brought up a lot of aggression a lot of misunderstanding a lot of violence in the family so you know i needed to kind of get through all of that very early on and then there was a po moment of the dark night of the soul. I remember it vividly in my 20s. I literally, literally did not know what to do with myself. And I was at that moment, you know, in the hero's journey when you're like, okay, now I give up. <laughs> it's enough of all of this. And, and then, you know, I literally surrendered myself into the faith and prayer, you know, because I didn't know what else yeah. to do. You know, it was like, okay, so if I don't now open this connection in the most profound way to the source to the god to the universe to myself i'm not going to be able to continue living my life in a way you know what i mean and then i got this whispers because the beautiful thing about our connection to ourselves and i keep on saying this to everybody that i come in contact with is that our soul which is our connection to the source our connection to yourself when we talk about loving yourself it's connecting to your soul and loving your soul our soul is very gentle it doesn't use strong voice and it whispers and it's very you have to really really listen you can it, it's not loud like mind is very loud the thoughts can be very loud the emotions can be very strong you know or the soul is super gentle i mean it can just say something gently to you so my soul at that moment in time told me love yourself love yourself love yourself unconditional love is the key unconditional love is the key and this is the first time when i really understood it and i was like okay so what do i need to do now and who do i need to become in order for me to be able to practice that mm. when and, did that voice come in the most strong like where in where that you... moment of despair misery yeah. you know not knowing what to do mm. uh, but i was open enough to hear it sometimes when people are in too much pain or they're lost in their yeah. life and they don't know they don't listen because they want something from outside to tell them something about themselves and i think if somebody is listening to this and you're in that position you have to listen from within because that voice from within, it's actually the one who is going to tell you the key of that moment and how to unlock it in order for you to move to the next moment of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, powerful. Yeah. And then as the years went on, mm -hmm. did that voice get more common? Was it? Was, yeah. Were, were you listening a lot more? Was, Absolutely. Did you know that it was kind of in you? rather than outside of you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, you know the good thing that happened in my life afterwards i began coaching so mm -hmm. you know when you coach other people and that was another thing that my voice told me now and now you need to coach others and i was like okay i cannot coach others i don't know I, how can i coach somebody my life is not sorted i always thought coach should be somebody yeah who has their they shit wouldn't together be any coaches. <laughs> you know what i mean they have everything together and i show up and like look ta-da, look yeah. at my life so <clears throat> when i began coaching you are in the work 
And, and part of coaching other people, it's seeing the potential in them and loving them unconditionally without any judgment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key. When you can love mm -hmm. yourself unconditionally without any judgment and you understand that you are imperfect and you understand that we are all are imperfect and that we have to learn how to love our imperfection, for me, then the, the unconditional love embodies. Mm -hmm. It's like you are not good in this, you're not good in that, you know, you're not good in that, but it doesn't really matter. You're good in this and this and this and this. Embrace and love your imperfections. So through coaching, I was able to see this in other people very clearly. What is their potential? What is their imperfection? What is their strength and their weakness? And then I begin practicing self-love. So if I just show up in a coaching space, for example, and I love that person unconditionally, would they, would they evolve? And for my surprise, that was much more important than any skills and tools I've learned as a coach. Mm -hmm. I could tell them anything about themselves, about how good they are. But if I was able to generate from my heart the energy of unconditional love in the field, they would transform they would transform, they would pick it up, and they yeah. would begin loving themselves. So to answer your question, how did I practice that for me? It was through coaching, yeah. mainly, and being very authentic and, and vulnerable in that space and knowing that I was also coaching myself when I was coaching other people as well. Mm. And how were you practicing the, or, or like providing the self, the love for them, how, the unconditional love for them? Mm -hmm. How would that, how would you embody that? Like how, how did that look? in the coaching it's space. mostly exactly it's mostly meditation and preparation it's connection to the heart you know i always practice this meditation which is called connecting to the sacred space of your heart there are uh -huh. two spaces in our heart one is called the sacred space and one is called the tiny space of the heart so when we when i practice meditation moving from my busy mind you know into my quiet and peaceful heart and then i come into this space that uh, mystics call the sacred space of your heart, which is the very unique space when you are in intimate relationship with yourself. So there is only you and you in that space. There is nobody else. And this is your intimate space with you. So that's the first step. You drop into that. In that space, the unconditional love is generated by itself because this is the space of sweetness, beauty, vulnerability, acceptance, uh, joy. Um, there's so much of the beautiful frequencies in there. And then from that secret space, sacred space of the heart, there is tiny space of the heart, which is even deeper within your heart, which is your relationship to God's source. This is where you have a direct text message to the God or social media or phone call, speed dial, speed dial basically whatever you want to say, but this is the space when you really, really, truly connect to the God source through yourself mm -hmm. in that tiny space. Because again, it's just you and, and you and God, source creator with you. And when you go in there, then this frequency of unconditional love intensifies even more. So my practice was to practice this meditation rigorously, to really get into my heart and get into my heart. I've been to the seminars and workshops and festivals and everybody's go be on your mind, get into your heart. And I was like, how do we do this? It's just, you know, get into yeah. your heart. But I did practice this a lot, get into my heart, get, connect, 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 connect. And then when I was really connecting, then the unconditional love for me and for the others comes naturally. It's mm -hmm. just a through breath, you can breathe in, breathe out and generate it. On, on will, on demand. As a man, what were the blocks in the way of that? Because <laughs> as a man, yeah. it is it is hard a lot of the time. And so I'm very aware of how I speak into mm. the existence, mm -hmm. my own demise. But as a man, to get into here, mm -hmm. when I'm often seeing things through this lens of, mm -hmm. of figuring things out, um, yeah, it's here. There's there's blocks in the way of that. So as a man, how did how did the that navigation of struggled a lot, Chris? I really really yeah. struggled a lot. You know, I really did. I mean, you know, my mind, you know, it's super intelligent, super active, super on, mm -hmm. sharp. You know, so bypassing the mind it was my biggest struggle, and the second one is being vulnerable, and and being allowing myself to be vulnerable which was against my training. Because as a man, I was trained to be tough, to be strong, to pretend, to carry out my duties and you know, not show any emotions, especially with the women. Are you good? Yeah, of course I'm great. And I'm thinking, oh my God, my life is falling apart. Mm -hmm. 
you know, being able to be vulnerable was practice. I'm still practicing that. I didn't mm. master, honestly. <laughs> you know, I, I can still go deeper into vulnerability. And with mind, when you practice conversation with heart, it loosens eventually. And, and I begin preaching what I'm teaching. What I was teaching was that the heart is the director, the mind is an instrument. And, and whenever I'm in a situation that my mind takes over and begins being director of my life, and now you should do this and this and this and this and this, mm -hmm. and your intuition is saying from your heart, no, 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 turn right. And I'm like, no, 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 this is, this is stupid. You know, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense because I cannot make a logical, intellectual conclusion and doesn't correlate to my journey of my life. I should go right. So I begin through error, mistakes, mm -hmm. learning to listen, more and more and more and then eventually sits in but it's it's again honestly it's work in progress i'm i'm even not even close to mastering my mind but i'm just a little bit better in being in my heart mm. than i was before sure i think that incremental moving the needle yeah and, and it, there's not many people that in my life that that's not happening to that, that every month every year like there's a progression mm -hmm. there's a real refinement over time and there's like the curiosity has to be there yeah and the humbling and just not taking everything so seriously but really exactly just coming into that heart yeah. space i think that's what's been calling most people mm. in at the moment mm. because what's got us in a whole heap of trouble is the the mind it's it's you know and you can't solve the problem on the same level it was created so yeah through the mind so exactly we have to come into our bodies mm. which holds a lot more wisdom mm. and a lot more of the uh the issues lie there also course so releasing those things when you when you soften mm. rigid bodies rigid yeah. mind and i mentioned too in preparation i think that for men you know the archetypes understanding the archetypes is really important so we have these four archetypes of uh, magician king lover and warrior mm -hmm. and i think that when it comes to getting into the heart you know the lover energy is so important you know being mm -hmm. able to be vulnerable enough as a lover to get into your heart and give yourself permission to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and to grieve or to experience intensity of, of the of the male emotions without feeling that mm -hmm. you are sissy or you're not in, you know you're not good man if you feel basically because that was the program yeah. you know you, you you cannot feel because if you feel you cannot, in trouble yeah you're in trouble you cannot uh, uh, you know so getting in relationship with those archetypes understanding that different frequencies in our bodies and then it's actually wonderful to feel and it's wonderful to experience and you can be stronger as a result of this yeah i think I, that's the key lesson for sure i i think that framework makes most sense because a lot of guys can be the lover when they know they can also be the warrior mm -hmm. so it's like okay i'll be the lover but i also know i can be the other three exactly. so that framework is so simple but mm -hmm. it's definitely effective and, and works yeah. a lot for people and also i think that for men it's important just to mention it to become more of the warrior and king nowadays because you know the, the warrior energy it's linked to aggression you mm -hmm. know people think warrior killing war but warrior it's not about aggression it's about protection it's about being available it's about being present it's about being a guard it's about integrity it's about standing for certain things that matter it's about showing up mm -hmm. in life with the full authenticity to what you believe and what are your core values and that's the warrior and i think nowadays we all need to be more of that Mm -hmm. All the men need to be more of that warrior. And then being a king, it's not only about being a king, you know, so that you can have your kingdom. It's about claiming your kingdom. It's about claiming that you king, not only for your own life, but the whole planet Earth, the whole universe, that you're part of the celestial kingdom that comes through you and with you. And you are that, so to say, king that can supervise and, and, and work with the evolution of our planet in, a, in the most beautiful way. So we just need to learn how to embody all the frequencies instead mm -hmm. of just being one dimensional. Mm. Yeah. Come back <laughs> into balance. Yes. It which brings us back to the initial conversation, which was the polarities and, mm. and bringing them all in being the bridge. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the word you said about unifying, unifying collapsing, the yeah. yeah, unifying, collapsing, really getting into that unity in, inside of yourself so that either if you go this way or that way, mm -hmm. we can love them enough so we can then collapse them so that we can be in, in unity consciousness. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's the name of the game at this moment in time on the planet. Yeah, If somebody was to come extraterrestrial from galaxy far, far away or start being better term 
and was to ask me, okay, you live on the planet Earth right now, give me the galactic news beyond, you know, the current affairs. What is going on on this planet and why is this all happening? What I would say is that we are now at the pivotal moment in time when we're learning to move from the polarity consciousness into unity consciousness to be able to ascend to the next level of our existence. And we're literally merging those two polarities into unity so that we can move on. Mm. Otherwise, we can stay in this polarity forever, you know, because it's going to be good and bad all the time. It's going to be boring and inter interesting Netflix all the time. Mm. You know, it can be a boring post and interesting post on social media all the time, forever. Yeah. yeah do so, you, do you think it's a metaphor for you, or do you think this is a physical ascending to something very different? Because you one of your mm. one of your podcasts on YouTube, the one that's got like the most amount of yeah the most amount of uh, views mm -hmm. was talking about this kind of, and, and it was, it was some similar foundations to Christianity mm -hmm. and uh, the, um, the, not the new Testament. There's, yeah. Yeah. But it was talking about this kind of new earth, new earth. Yeah, exactly. And not about timelines, but it's like, what are we making way for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you ask me, is it physical? Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause I, I really mm. battle and struggle with the, the concept of what this looks like mm -hmm. and i i do feel i fight feel myself check out mm -hmm. when i hear people talk about these certain levels of existence or planetary <laughs> situations and i'm like oh where's this coming from like, what's going on you want to be in the moment right now i do i just want to be in the world also and yeah, i love that and that's it's a superpower of mine yeah. because i don't get lost too much over here or over here yeah and it's like okay how can i um remain dancing but not lose track of the song mm -hmm. and i feel this is this is a beautiful analogy for everyone i feel like we're all dancing to our own song but mm -hmm. sometimes we l lose track of all the, mm -hmm. this sounds better over here and we move to that and we mm -hmm. kind of come out of rhythm and alignment but yeah it's a uh, it's understanding I, I get it as a metaphor mm -hmm. and that works for me mm -hmm. it's like okay i can take the lessons and i can leave what doesn't resonate exactly I mean, the story of Ascension is a big one. Yeah, mm -hmm. we would need probably 10 podcasts for me to kind of explain. Well, we could do it. Though, yeah, like yeah, we ten. could do it serious. <laughs> no, 10 podcasts, but I have to shortcut it for you. Uh -huh. How I see it is in embodiment. I think that Ascension, you know, sometimes think, we think that we need to leave somewhere. Mm. I think that we're actually bringing the new frequency of our beingness in our body right now, right here. Mm -hmm. That so it, it, this is this is one of the most beautiful planets in the creation. This is what star beings say all the time. They said that the Earth is the jewel of creation. That there is nothing like this when you travel in the galaxies. There is so much yeah. biodiversity, so much beauty, so much love, so much intelligence on this planet. It's like you come here and like, mm. oh my God, look at this. Mm. So why would we leave it? You know, why would we escape somewhere else? I think that what we're doing is we're just bringing more of ourselves present in the moment right now in this earth at this moment in time. And this is what we call ascension. Ascension is becoming more of you. So what is that more of you? It's more of your soul, more of your connection to everything around you, more of your consciousness, more of your awareness. That's the ascension for me. It's not like we leave somewhere and we just leave this behind i think yeah. it's actually we need to spiritualize the matter we need we are the ones who are bringing this yeah. into reality and this could be our potential exactly it can be our potential yeah of course and that's what we're working with when we say yeah we have so much of this potential exactly but why are some humans attracting so much mm -hmm. and then others not mm -hmm. we both have the same potential mm -hmm. but it's really it's really coming a match for that yeah and we can all do this yeah and we have to open to to receive that potential, right? So the mm. potential is beautiful because what we can become and what we're not, that's the definition of potential. So if we open, if we open and we go beyond what we taught traditionally, that this is it, this is our life, and this is, I need to work nine to five, I need to make money, I need to do this, I need to do that. If you go a little bit beyond that and get into what I call magicality of life, how outstanding this is, how beautiful the nature is, how adventurous everything is, we open up, then we can bring that potential, more of that in our physical form. Mm -hmm. And we can become more and more and more and more and more and more, and that's an ascension. And then we become also activating our superpowers and you know we, we, know, we all know we have them. 
Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we all know we have them. I do witness what keeps pe- most people stuck is mm. the energy of like lack. Mm-hmm. It's just not good enough or seeing all these things around me as problems. Mm-hmm. And it it's the one thing that I think most people can agree on that keeps people limited and just fighting, fighting the fight mm-hmm. and not going, um, not not changing you know, stuck in that cycle and then feeling a lot more pain. Exactly. And how come we got into that perspective of luck when if you look around us, the planet Earth is so abundant? Mm-hmm. You know, that, that for me was always interesting thing. Yeah. You know, in any country in the world, if you leave the city and go into the nature, wherever you are, in England, in France, in Bali, in Mexico, in Brazil, it doesn't really matter. The nature is different. You go into the nature and you find the abundance. Mm. You find everything that you, you, you're looking for. And somehow we started believing mm. in luck. Yeah. Somehow something happened and we started believing there is not enough for all of us. L- you say lack or luck? L- luck. Yeah. Luck. Not, not like being lucky, luck or lack, lucky, yes, lucky. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. My funny English yeah, accent. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah lack for sure because it's an actual story that Mm -hmm. we've created that keeps us separate from what we're a part of exactly and and that is the biggest wound Mm -hmm. yeah yeah somehow we created it but we need to wake up i think luck as well luck because being lucky (laughs) yeah because what what is lucky like that's another story and another Mm. thing we've created to justify the circumstances Mm -hmm. that we're in or we might not think we're deserving of Mm -hmm. oh we're lucky to be in this yeah it's like the word lost. Yes. Like, is anything ever lost? No. Mm. Mm. Like you could you could measure that nothing is ever lost. Mm. But the word luck is interesting. I think Seneca said that uh, luck is when preparation meets opportunity, mm. which I like. I love that definition as well. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, but the, the word luck, it's, it's, I don't think there are any things that are lucky. It's, mm. it's what's happening right now. It's, it's happening because internally mm-hmm. you're ready for it, mm-hmm. you know in that kind of more positive way and you show up i think that you know sometimes when we show up in our life Mm -hmm. when we listen to that inner voice of intuition of that niggle that tells you do this do that be that be that and we show up then it happens Mm -hmm. it's as simple as that you know i know in my life when i didn't want to go to the let's say party or event and 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 something inside of me was saying go 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 and i was i'm so lazy i can't be bothered this is going to be stupid why am i going there the people are stupid i it's and then i listen and i went something extraordinary happened every time which i would call it lucky oh my god i met this person who changed my life how lucky was i right Mm. but i did it yeah i showed up there is that thing. It's like, go talk to that person. You're like, no, <laughs> no, they might not want to talk to me. But there's that voice that pulls you to certain people, mm-hmm. pulls you to, to pick up the phone and call someone or whatever it might be. And when we silence that and when we don't answer mm. that message and we don't act on it, we're actually strengthening the muscle to not do that. Mm. And then over time, that's going to compound mm. and there's just going to be no voice. Exactly. Why would the voice be there if you don't listen to it? Mm just going to get silent yeah then it kind of the soul begins whispering less and less and less and less and it becomes really really tiny and then that's when people don't hear it any longer Mm. and everybody for example comes to coach and say i don't have intuition i said everybody has intuition but you don't you don't hear it any longer because it's quiet you need to give it space Mm. so what are the things that you're working through now like what things that are holding you back from the next thing Do, do do you keep that full momentum of like creating something new this year like how does that how does that work for you i always kind of give myself challenges into creating something new Mm -hmm. and and for me this year is very interesting because i always get into this goal setting but from a positive point of view not just goal for the sakes of the goal but really goals for what i really would love to accomplish Mm -hmm. but this year for me it's about beingness my biggest goal for myself and for with people that I'm coaching and working with and training and retreats and around is to amplify and to be as much as I can be and to be in a full acceptance. Those are the two things that I'm working on right now. Mm-hmm. Being able to be present in the moment, but really present. Like I'm not talking about practicing presence and bypassing, but present. You know, when you quiet your mind and literally you don't think about 
the next moment or the past moment, but you're as present as you can be. Mm. And that's what I'm practicing and working on. The other one is full acceptance of whatever occurs in my life. And for me, for some reason, acceptance is super important right now because I've realized that even though I've worked with myself a lot, you know, I still have judgments. Mm. I still have things that I think are right or wrong and things that I think how they should be and not be and what I would love and not love. So I'm still working with my ego to get into the space of everything is perfect as is, mm, accepted. Hard one. Hard one. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I know. What was the, <laughs> the Ram Dass quote? Um, uh, life, everything is perfect as it is, even my even my want to change it. <laughs> Love that. That's yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well. That's perfect as well. Yeah. Exactly because you go to the next level of it. It's yeah. amazing what he said. I love that. But it's it's a tough, it's a tough one, you know, mm. because you do have to surrender. And I was investigating and thinking, what is it, you know, inside of me that doesn't want to accept? You know, what is it inside of me that it's still struggling and wrestling with that? Mm. And it comes to trust. And it comes to deeper trust that we even can call trust or even faith you know i don't know if you need to make a distinction but it's like for me it's even faith that you really 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 trust in perfection of life mm -hmm. yeah i was asked a question the other day like what inspires you the most and i was like the easiest answer is just to look up <laughs> and see the, the vastness of everything look at the ocean mm. and like that is most inspiring when you just surrender to mm. something way bigger than yourself mm -hmm. and just uh, the ultimate unknown mm -hmm. that everything is mm. is as it is yeah exactly and is, and is way bigger than you mm. and just that the the uncertainty of it all which is inspiring because then everything's possible. Mm. I love that you're calling uncertainty of it's all inspiring. This is a beautiful way. It's so important people to listen yeah. to that mm. because, you know, I, I witness in our life right now, a lot of people are struggling with that uncertainty for some reason, mm. especially in the last few years. There's a lot of that. It's so uncertain and people are like, ah, you know, tensing. Mm. So when you say that this is super inspiring, it's it's a good reframing, you know, for us to see uncertainty for what it really is. Sure. You yeah. Know? How can you judge yeah. any situation really, mm -hmm. good or bad? Mm -hmm. um, the very fact that you can judge that just is, is so limiting because mm -hmm. you just don't know what's going gonna to make way for. I'd lean into that every day, like, challenging people to see everything as an opportunity mm -hmm. what does that look like how does that change your reality mm -hmm. seeing absolutely everything how far can you take that like death mm -hmm. like your job like losing things t being in traffic what well, everything mm -hmm. as an opportunity you see but when to we, train exactly yourself. to train yourself <laughs> exactly when you see when we come how i hear you mm. when you say this and based on the beginning of our podcast it's you are now I'm ascending. <laughs> ascending and collapsing. <laughs> You're collapsing into unity. You see, you see how can you yeah. take this as a learning lesson, everything? So you're not judging it, but you're bringing it back home into your heart. It's good. Mm. You know, every situation in our life is there for the learning growth and empowerment. If you see life like that, then we will depart from victimhood forever and we will collapse into the unity in our hearts because everything is for our benefit, right? Mm. Can you begin... To believe, yeah, if you, yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah. If you believe, all of us believe that. Oh my God, our life will be like wow. Yeah, yeah, be possible. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So, if nothing needs to be different, where's your motivation to change things? Because <laughs> we see things that are not preferable. Mm -hmm. We see suffering. We want to reach out, pull the man, woman up. Mm -hmm. We want to change certain things based on our assumptions, judgments of mm -hmm. what we feel is right, wrong, mm -hmm. and the moral landscape that we live within, mm -hmm. which I'm learning a lot more about, mm -hmm. which is a whole study, lifetime study in itself. <laughs> so how does that fit in? Because I think it's relevant for a lot of people who listen to the podcast, who care mm -hmm. about change, mm -hmm. who fight for change, mm -hmm. who, who want to help and be part of the conversation. Yeah, around calling in and being a part of the solution. Yeah, I one thing that I always share in the podcast. I think it's good for listeners, especially for ones that are fighting for change. That you know, I change the, I use different words when it comes to change 
because I, I nice. talk about transformation and evolution. Mm. And the reason why I stopped using the word change long time ago is because change by nature has the very equally opposite force of resistance. There mm. is something in human collective consciousness. It, there is a program. I think that we need to understand that we are collective as humanity and we all have the beliefs and certain operating programs in our collective consciousness, not only my individual collective, and there is this resistance to change. So whenever we start talking about change, yeah. there's always a lot of resistance. Well, it means death in a way, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's part of you has to die to change. Exactly. So if we, if we begin talking about transformation, transforming the state, one state to another state, evolution, yeah. evolving to a different version of yourself, it becomes much more graceful, elegant, easy. It's more spiral. It's more feminine instead of change, which is masculine. And, ah, you know that you have this. I like that. Yeah, I know what I mean. So I think it's important if you are a change maker, if you're somebody who cares, you know, because people who care, they're <laughs> yeah. change makers. Yeah. They care about state of the affair. They care about earth, that you start using different language. Yeah, I like the word transition. Transition. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Because it's what I feel is happening when mm. I work with someone for a couple of months and it's mm. like, you're just transitioning. And this, whatever, this conversation, this podcast is for transition. Mm -hmm. People will come listen for a season and then mm -hmm. they'll do their thing. It doesn't have to be so permanent, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. We live in all these boxes that mm -hmm. feel like we have to be, everything has to be the same. Yeah. But it is cool bringing that in. Yeah, love yeah. That. Transition, transition and com complete reinventing ourselves and moving into the new and new and new. And getting out of that box, it's super important, isn't it? Of mm. sameness. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the the frameworks are masculine, feminine. Mm. Do they work for you? Do they do they help you make sense of certain things, like they, the yin and the yang? They do. You know, I think that that's the you know the physics of this reality. I yeah. see it as as a as a foundation of this reality, mm -hmm. and they do work with me. You know, and I I know when I'm in my feminine energy, when I'm in my masculine energy. I, I've managed to kind of learn this about my life and define my softer loving, gentle, caring, intuitive, mm. open, wise, you know, part. And then I mm. also managed to define my action-oriented, intelligent, driven, ambitious, masking energy. And I think that that's the, again, the name of the game when we learn how to balance those, mm. you know, and also learn how to move more into the feminine because I think the masculine is overexposed. Mm -hmm. I think that men, are living in, in deeply into their masculinity, but I also feel that society, it's deeply masculine as well. I work with corporate world. I have woman who comes, she's a CEO on the top of her game. She's in her masculine energy. She's not talking about holistic approach to leadership and she's not talking about benefit for everybody and family values. She's talking about profit margins and growth mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. all the t year after year. It doesn't matter that we made 10 million last year. Now we need to make 25% more and, and then more and then more. This is kind of masculine greed. Mm. So I think that masculine energy is overexposed. And then, you know, this whole rebalancing in ourselves is understanding that, that we overused it in a way that we need to bring the femininity a little bit more and create relationship with our feminine energy mm. and hear it and love it and not thinking that it's weak or unimportant. So, yeah, absolutely. The biggest one for me around that is cycles mm -hmm. and how that is a more feminine way mm -hmm. due to the, the body of a mm -hmm. feminine mm -hmm. and how we don't make space for that. <clears throat> As a, <laughs> It's like the biggest thing I feel I need to, I want to keep repeating over and over because it's still just not in many people's awareness of how our lifestyles are set up, you know, on the whole to really cater to men. Yes, you know, and yes. just and just it's just a big one. Yeah, brings a lot, brings a lot of sadness actually to mm. to to my body. Like when I when I lean into that a bit mm. more. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. How things we've, we've we've set this set the culture up. Of course, but it's again to bring into balance, to bring into polarity. You yeah, have also, to go there to know. You have there, to right? go there to know there. Exactly, <laughs> we have to. You know, I think that also for me, uh, full acceptance. I was talking to a second ago about that my lesson in this year is being full acceptance. Mm. It's seeing it for what it really is. 
and and accepting and i think that sometimes we do need to get out of balance to be able to get back into it mm. if if we are playing in this reality and part of this reality experience is for us to experiment to be like children to try things out to make mistakes to fall to be imperfect in our life to what you're saying embody ourselves mm. fully then we do need to go out of balance to be able to find the balance again yeah. We, need to, we need to go and say, oh my God, look what we've done. I mean, we're living in a complete orchestration, masculine execution. Da, 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 da. Is this good enough? Is this making us happy? Mm. Are we content? Is that the way forward? Mm. And also, you know, if you go too much in femininity, you become being toxic feminine. And toxic feminine is obsessive, compulsive, possessive. You know, there is also that side. Mm. you know bitchy and you know and never satisfied and whatever you do it's never good enough and you need to do more of this and more but it's not good enough and again and again and again and again so even if you go in that you know that we're too much in the feminine it's also out of out of balance so we need to kind of get into that midpoint mm. once again yeah and how we do this by experimenting by playing by trying things out by learning mm. about life about creation about ourselves yeah important mm -hmm. nice and you're coaching now is it is, it, is this your you're still doing bits of coaching i do you know i do you know i, I used to kind of do more of coaching now i'm doing more again you mm -hmm. know i'm, I'm tra traveling around the world i'm doing also a lot of presentations teaching you know i work with organizational development as well mm -hmm. still you know i still believe that you know developing uh, business and big ecosystem systematic systemic and systematic change mm. is something that you know i'm passionate about because i feel once when we change the bigger systems and evolve the bigger systems it's easier for everybody so sure. i still have a passion for evolving and <laughs> transforming businesses to yeah. be much more humane because we still are in this reality when people are working and needing money and needing to pay their bills so i work with that you know mm. transformation i love it and then I do a lot of individual coaching, a lot of retreats, a lot of, you know, whatever comes my way. I really, really enjoy developing and working with people. Mm. You got a retreat in Bali? Yeah, yeah, there is a retreat in Bali coming up, yeah. yeah. And there is one in Costa Rica as well. Uh, Bali, it's in May, and then Costa mm. Rica, it's uh, in December. Mm. Both those retreats are called Awakening Your Soul Consciousness. So it's about exactly what you said when we start talking. It's about coming present to yourself, connect, connecting to your soul, mm -hmm. and then living your life from 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 that space, from listening to your soul. If your soul is the guiding mechanism, it's the purest, most essential part of you that knows your life, that knows the direction of your life. If you listen to your soul, what will then you do, become, play with, experience, mm -hmm. explore? And how can you be authentic in, in alignment with your soul? I think that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say this one last thing. When I was coaching people in their 70s and 80s, but really early on in my career transition through their retirement, you know, there are two types of people, people who are completely content and happy and people who are miserable and people who are content and happy were the one who really aligned with their soul. Mm -hmm. And people who are miserable were out of it. They were in their mind, completely forgot the soul exists. And they will always say something was missing. They were complaining, bitching, whining about life, being negative and toxic. They lost connection. So for me, what I understand is my work is to reconnect people to their soul in everything that I do. Being mm -hmm. corporate, being 101, being leadership retreats. When that clicks, we can play. What language do you use in that space? Do you speak about the soul? I do. Does, does it resonate? Does, does the people have their own subjective kind of idea of what that means for them? Mm -hmm. or, or is there... Is there like a context around what you what you say around soul awakening and nurturing like that side of you? Yeah, and it's, I used to be undercover. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's where I am right and, now. <laughs> and, and use, you know, the language that people can understand. Yeah. You know, when I was in the corporate world, you know, I'm still in, you know, I, in the past I didn't use the word soul because it would be like, ooh, you know, love, ooh. Uh, Nowadays, I give myself permission. You know, there are certain things in this life that are truths, you know, that are universal, and we do all have soul. Mm. Even the people who don't believe they have it, they have it. It's just something. How would you define it? But when I look into your eyes right now, and this is how I would define it, I look into your eyes, and if I look be, and I'm doing it right now. If I look behind your eyes right now. The left now, eye, right? Yes. <laughs> and I look deeper, I see it. I'm, now we feel connection. 
Mm. Right, there so you go. Shifted, yeah. it shifted, you see? Now we connected soul to soul. If I look into my dog's eyes, I say to people with animals, just look at your dog's eyes. Look at your children's eyes. Look at, you know, look, look mm -hmm. into, into that. And then you feel it. It's there. Yeah. It's there. Yeah, that's the most powerful practice we can ever do. Exactly. Just look into another yeah. living, breathing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I believe this organic life is the most important and we should preserve it. And that's why I believe this planet is extraordinary and most important and we should celebrate it and live in it in the most beautiful way. And because of this organic existence, nothing can replace that. Mm. Nothing. None amount of AI or social media or the new glasses or anything that is going on cannot replicate. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't fear me. Doesn't. It doesn't replace anything. Yeah, I'm exactly. Not, I'm not worried that yeah. there will ever be mm -hmm. a conscious so. being mm -hmm. that is anything remotely similar to to the nature that surrounds us. Mm -hmm. There was something that did scare me though, what? <laughs> and it, that it was something around the. Oh, it was. I don't know if I can remember. It was a one of, one of the new robots um having a conversation and getting upset i think it was something to do they, they called the robot ugly mm -hmm. and they truly <laughs> communicated how like hurt they were <laughs> wow and i can feel empathy for a robot mm -hmm. if they look like a human it's you know how, how's that gonna play out it's so fascinating to to understand that we could be living in that world, you know. I think it's inevitable in a way. We're already seeing it. I don't want to end the conversation there, but yeah, it's a. Uh, it is, but it's it's in, it's in collective consciousness. We don't need to go there, but it's it's good mm. to say it, you know, because it's part of our collective experience. You and I are witnessing the same thing, and this mm. emergence of advanced artificial intelligence is all around us. Mm. So it is part of us. Again, we can go back into positive, embrace it accept it mm -hmm. love it for what it really is i was listening to the other podcast the other day you know with somebody who says at the beginning when they introduced the calculators you know that yeah. was the original ai so to say and yeah. you know, 100 times 300 and divided by five how yeah amazing it was for us yeah you know what i mean yes of course we can practice our mind to do the advanced mathematics in our head absolutely yeah. and i'm sure that it will develop some parts of our brain further if you were forced to do the advanced math and calculations all the time but it also simplifies our life and gives us the space to do something else mm -hmm. and become more creative so i think we need to take it for what it is and embrace with it embrace it with the positivity mm -hmm. without being naive i think that <laughs> the only thing that i want for humanity is without being naive that's my <laughs> that's my journey to, to not be naive but also <laughs> understand what's happening yeah like measure and and uh, and figure out like if it's uh, going one way or, or, mm -hmm. or more the other way mm -hmm. without like kidding myself mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's like being in being in the world but not of the world exactly that's exactly. always landed yeah uh, i think it's a biblical quote uh and it's yeah it's not being in the world like not really um being so attached to everything mm -hmm. but then can't be of it you know mm -hmm. mm. beautiful anything you want to leave us on what you know what i would love to say it's it's uh, my key message for today mm. was sitting here with you uh, and yeah. connecting and talking is that you know connecting to your heart you know learning how to love yourself unconditionally mm -hmm. if you don't know how to do it the the first step is intention so intent that you would love yourself unconditionally meaning that we love and accept ourselves with all imperfections, everything, all the good things and bad things, or the mm. interesting things, boring things, everything. We, nobody's perfect. Mm. I've coached so many people in my life, I never found anybody perfect, including mm. myself, and it's illusion. So we have to love ourselves in our imperfections, and this is the starting point of unconditional love. And the more we love ourselves, the more present are we able to be, and then we can do the advanced stuff, mm. which is collapsing those polarities collapsing good and bad interesting boring conditions conditions mm -hmm. exactly into that full acceptance unity consciousness love and then 
live from that space and see what happens. Mm -hmm. What will happen if we live from that space? How we would be? What would be the quality of our life, the quality of our thoughts, the quality of our feelings, the quality of our actions and beingness from that level? It's different. Yeah, It's completely different. That's one message. And the other one, it's, it's more enough for everybody. You know, we live on an abundant planet. The scarcity mentality of not having enough or competing for more, or, it's not true. This planet is absolutely, totally abundant and it has more than enough for everybody. And we're all taken care of and we all can have whatever we want to have. There's no limits for anybody. Mm. Love that. I need a bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, brother. I appreciate some beautiful themes of this podcast. Mm. And uh, I love where we've gone. And there seems this intention of, yeah, the self love. I like the intention because you're really holding something in the tension and you have to let it go for it to have the impact mm -hmm. so yeah i just thought i'd drop that in um but yeah just to really embrace and see everything as an opportunity and just to the positivity that you come in with and that you speak to is very infectious thank that's you that's what's going to land i think mostly mm appreciate you coming on thank brother. you thank you thank you amazing. appreciate being with you it's such an amazing yeah. experience thank you so much for this <laughs> time traveled in time the, traveled in, in the, this in amazing <laughs> space yeah it's really really special thank you so much for reaching out and for this mm -hmm. wonderful time we spent together yeah thank you for giving me your time brother give me a hug yeah, yeah that was amazing this is what you can't do on the, uh, on the online yeah 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 you're